Hi, I'm Lisa Lacroix. I'm a speaking skills and communication skills coach. And I thought I'd bring some skills and tools that you can use in the real world right here for you on YouTube. Of course, I would love for you to join my speaking skills training that is coming up soon. Enrollment is now open. You can find a link in the bio. But in the meantime, I want to give you some practical tools that you can use. Some people think that the only ones who need speaking skills are those who are on stages or who aspire to doing TED Talks. But the truth is, speaking skills are critical for anyone. It's important during a dating situation or if that dating circumstance is over and you want to break up. How do you do that in an effective way? It's important for uh, connecting with your partner and creating more intimacy. It's important for asking for what it is that you want in your interaction with your partner, physically, intimately, emotionally, in, in, every, in every way. It's important for you if you run a team or you are up for a new job or interviewing. It's important if you get that job and you need to negotiate your pay. Every instance that you interact with another human being has a need for powerful speaking skills and powerful communication skills. So the way I see communication skills is that is the broader skill set, the broader meta skill of how we interact with another in both spoken and unspoken ways. And so today I want to talk a little bit about that unspoken communication, body language, and how it impacts our communication in general and our speaking specifically. It's been said that only 7% of the words we use have an impact on our communication, and the rest is body language and other unspoken interactions. So let's talk about seven body language habits that are not often discussed, but that do have an impact and how we can improve upon them. First of all, mirroring. Mirroring is a really important tool for connecting and letting the person know that you are with them. That could be as simple as you know, when they're speaking and saying something, you want to affirm it. So you're affirming what they're saying by mirroring their belief about it, mirroring the fact that this is important to them by nodding. Some people like the idea of mirroring where you express expressly unconsciously do the same thing they're doing. This has gotten a bad rap in a lot of circles because it's a pickup artist technique. But I do think that if you're subtle about it, and in some unconscious ways, you might automatically do some of the things that the other person does. I, I think that you want to be really careful about mirroring because it can come across as disingenuous, especially if you are doing it explicitly and consciously. To whatever degree you are connecting with the person and your mirror neurons are activated by what they do, I think that can create an unconscious connection. But when we start to manipulate it and intend it, it's a bit of a tricky a bit of a tricky space. So there's this idea of handshakes. How do we shake our hands? How we meet another person? This is a bit of a tricky one because mostly people don't shake hands anymore. It's become much more rare that people shake hands. Much more commonly is fist bump, maybe even just a nod. Uh, but to whatever degree you are going to shake another person's hand, make sure that it's a firm grasp and that it's not limp like a fish, but that it actually has some presence, almost like you're hugging the person's hand with your hand. If it's too hard, it can seem like you're going to you can communicate you're wanting to be in control. And if it's too loose, it can communicate that you are not bringing any uh, definitive belief system or intentionality to the interaction. So it can, it can really reflect on you how you shake another person's hand. The other thing is that you're going to have to use some intuition and some some reading of the body language of the other person to know what kind of interaction makes the most sense. Facial expressions matter. We get oxytocin flooding our brain when we make eye contact with another person and when we express what's true for us. Sometimes when people are nervous, especially, they can get very still and not move. And sometimes people don't even move their top lip when they speak. So if that's you, you might need to stretch your comfort with using your face to express who you are. 
And that might be doing some exercises or just loosening up your face. I, I come from an acting background, so I love to teach people some of the basic acting exercises that are warm-up exercises. And some of them can make you look pretty silly. So you can stretch your face, scrunch it up like a ball, open it up wide, and then do articulation exercises with your mouth. All of that's going to free your face so it can have more expressiveness. And when you express with your face in ways that are consistent and aligned with and in harmony with your message, people are, first of all, going to understand what you're saying more effectively. But they're also going to feel emotionally connected to you. We are human beings and we connect through the mirror neurons in our bodies, through the connection with another person, through what we see with our eyes in ways that we connect emotionally. How we gesture during conversations matters. So, so I include in body language, facial expression, eye contact, hand movement, but also our physical gestures with our body. So to whatever degree you can use your hands in really specific ways, you can use your body, whether you're on a Zoom call by leaning in to express that you're interested or maybe leaning back to express that you're curious, you can use the space on the camera zoom for illustrating different time frames or different circumstances or specific situations. You can do the same thing in person. So be aware of all the possibilities that are accessible to you with how you gesture and how you use your, your language during conversation. Small things like if you cross your arms can illustrate that you're closed off. Whereas if you have your body more open, that communicates interest and receptivity. If you cross your legs in a certain way, can also communicate that you're not uh, open to the other person. So be aware of the subtle messages that your body is communicating to the person you're speaking with. How we use personal space can have an impact. So we want to be attuned to the other person, which means listening with your ears, but also with your eyes about how comfortable they are. When you take the emphasis off what you're saying and who you are, what you want to need, and instead put it on the other person and see how comfortable are they, can I make them more comfortable? Maybe a smile would make a difference for them feeling relaxed, or maybe I'm getting myself a little too close to them and I need to back off a little bit. So how we use our personal space in relationship to another and how we perceive their body as they are carrying it through space can really make a, a difference for how we um, effectively connect with them. Touching. Touching is another tough one. Touching a person in an appropriate way, which in a business environment might be pretty subtle. Um, and in fact, maybe not even appropriate at all. But if it's a, say a date or something where you want to communicate that you're interested or you want to be closer, you can subtly touch the person's arm or maybe the back of their shoulder. So this can have an impact on creating connection and expressing interest. You have to be careful that you don't do it too much and that you don't do it in inappropriate situation and inappropriate ways. So since, since we are talking about all the aspects of communication and all the aspects, all the situations in which our communication matters, there's going to be a wide range of what's appropriate and what's not. So pay attention. Some of this is going to be a learning experiment. How does it feel? You know, if I touch myself, if I, if I start to nervously fidget with my clothes or my hair, know that that can also communicate discomfort or insecurity or lack of confidence. And the final one is how do you hold yourself when you're either sitting or standing? So slouching is something that can be a common habit that people have because they get used to being relaxed in their bodies. And sometimes that can result in slouching, especially if they spend a lot of time on a computer but when we are slouching both in a sitting position or in a standing position, it can communicate a lack of confidence and also just generally um, a sense of disembodiment. Whereas if we can open our shoulders and drop them down and lift the back of our heads so that our chests are open and our heads are held high, that can communicate both confidence and openness at the same time. So pay attention to how you're sitting and I can, I'll do another video maybe on uh, 
two minute technique for uh, improving posture in a five step process. So I'm going to end this video here. I, I've wanted to touch on some of the ways that that uh, nonverbal communication and body language can both help and hinder our interactions with other people. And it's been a very broad and general video that I've, I've touched on these skills here. So if you want some more specific practice and ways to apply some of these skills to the situations that are relevant in your life, definitely consider joining Speak for Yourself. Open Enrollment is now open and you can find a link and more information in all the places, the comments, in the description and below, depending on which platform you're looking at this. I hope to see you in the course. Oh.